Hi everyone. So in this video, we introduce the concept of unfolding the computational graph, and this is really a representation kind of thing, right? So, so we want to know what's the computational graph that corresponds to uh, a recurrent neural network and how the parameter sharing through time allows us to capture very uh, uh, long term or very deep in time uh, relationships or interdependencies uh, without adding a computational burden. And uh, that representation of the computational graph is important because this is really what happens in forward and backward propagation, right? So it, uh, it tells you a lot about uh, the computational operations that are taking place or the computational cost. So let's consider a dynamical system where the state of the system, let's call it S of T at time step T equals F is a function of S of T minus one and the parameters of the system. Right and some external parameters. Let's say external input theta. So basically, s at time step t is a function of the value of s, the state, the previous state at time step t minus one, and the external input theta. If I unfold that simple dynamical system for three time steps, I will get this equation right here. S of three is f of s of two. Right, so this is this is right here. This is s of two, and s of two itself is f of s of one and theta. Right, so s of three is f of f of s of one and theta and theta. Right, graphically that's what happens. S of t minus one affects s of t through f, right, and then affects. S of t plus one, uh, 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 S of t affects S of t plus one through f. Now theta is a vector, right? And you could also assume that there is a theta of t minus one going here, a theta of t going here, right? A theta of t plus one going here. And this function could be a function of the whole vector theta or just the current and previous values of theta right or maybe only the current value of theta right now um, when the recurrent neural network is trained to predict the future depending only on the past values it typically learns and in the next video we'll discuss variations like what are the different types of recurrent neural networks but typically what happens is that you have a, this, instead of the system state you have the hidden layers, right? So the hidden layer activations is basically a vector representing the network state. And the hidden layer activation at time step t, you can think of it as a lossy summary or a summary of, ta of the task relevant aspects of the inputs up to t, right? So all the inputs x of one up to x of t Assuming it's a, a, a regular recurrent neural network, not a bi-directional recurrent neural network that also creates a summary of the future. So assuming it's causal, meaning the output at time t depends only on the inputs up to time t, then you can think of the state of the system as a summary. And that summary is not a perfect summary, right? And uh, that summary is concise as possible because you are trying to only store with the minimum computation and storage possible, the only the task relevant aspects of the inputs up to T, right? So in statistical notation, you can, so if I say uh, um, that H of T is a function uh, uh, and that function is, uh, let's call it G of T of X of T down to X of one, right? Then what happens in recurrent neural networks is that this function doesn't depend on t, but depends on the previous state, right? So I can replace this g of t by a function f that is not a function of t, but it depends on the previous state h of t minus one, as well as the current input only x of t and the system parameters theta, right? So, and that's what we call by parameter sharing through time, is that the function itself doesn't change with time but remember that the system parameters could change with time so that it can allow the network by changing the system parameters 
right? That uh, that maybe like for example, if I'm learning from a video images in a video, that uh, I learn uh, like I make a distinction between the start of the video and the end of the video, right? So I learn that certain events at the start of the video make uh, mean different things than when they happen at the end of the video, and we'll get into that particular feature later uh, in the section through variations of the recurrent. Uh, neural networks but here let's say the basic network you have what's called a hidden to hidden uh, connection and uh, the notation for it is like that here right and that uh, um, shaded rectangle we will usually uh, use it use it to denote a delay of a single time step that means that the hidden layer at time t minus one is connected is a connection to the hidden layer at time t Right. If I unfold that simple network, then basically you get this unfolded computational graph. Right. Now note that the same weight parameters W from H of T minus one to H of T are the same W that's going from H of T to H of T plus one. And that's what we meant in the last video by saying parameter sharing through time allows you to have very deep in time computational graphs with a very small number of parameters sounds good so uh, from the next video uh, we'll start discussing the different types of recurrent neural networks right so not all recurrent neural networks need to have this basic connection from a hidden to hidden maybe you can have output to hidden connection the output at time t minus one is connected to the hidden layer at time t and uh, the implications in terms of training and the expressive power of these different types. Thank you.